we start with quite a big question because I think you're you're one of the few people who uh, know what's actually going on in this world. Can you explain what's happening? It's not simple, but I think there is uh, some basic factor. Uh, we have created a world that is evolving faster than we can grasp. It's getting together, it's, we call it globalizing, but actually it's moving behind or beyond the traditional community areas, frameworks. We, people who lived in a com given community, they had the mindset, they had the values, they had the, the vision, they perceived each other, they felt that they belong, and the rest of the world was somehow outside of it. But people themselves just thought that they are, they are, they are part of this group, they are part of a, a town and a village or a region or a nation, uh, then even a, even a continent, and that's their world. And now the world is, is moving from these traditional levels into more and more interconnection, into, into a wider and wider spheres. And people's thinking has not caught up. All these many, many groups in the world, many, many sets of people are all maximizing their own interest and they are all neglecting the interests of the others, basically, or taking into only marginally account. I have to take into account that this world is very delicately balanced. It's very easily disbalanced. It's uh, right now the edge of its sustainability. We have created a global world and we have a local mentality. That's the crux of the problem. Yeah. So, how can the newest insights from quantum physics help us understand what's happening? Well, there are so many things you can get from quantum physics, but uh, the basic thing I think, which is the most important one, is that we are uh, connected. The so-called Newtonian science, which says everything happens locally, everything happens only here, in particular point of space and time. And it's only connected with these mechanical laws. So sometimes we know by electromagnetic connections as well. And we now we are connected with information, we can connect it globally. But uh, the actual physical connections are local. And quantum physics tells you that the connections that we ha have are non-local. That means they're intrinsic. They are beyond the Newtonian everyday or three-dimensional space and time. Like the connections are, 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 are almost like in a hologram. In a hologram, you know, every element is, is present simultaneously with all the other ele elements. All of the things are given simultaneously so that you, at, you, you, uh, at, you confront, you perceive, you act on any part. All the other parts are instantly affected by it. Yeah. I think the traditional societies knew that they are all connected to each other and to, the, to nature to the cosmos, the felt connection. Now we have created this bubble, this deviation from our healthy instincts, which says the whole world is a mechanism, it's a kind of a machine, yeah. and it all can be operated like a local material thing. You push one button, it only works over here, you know? And you push one button, it works everywhere. Yeah. 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 Well, in this quest, I'm actually trying to find people with a plan. Uh, but I realized that uh, so many people are so good in pointing out what's wrong, but there are only a few who mm. actually have a plan. And I understood that you, 30 years ago, you, you came up with a number of plans, uh, such as the Goals for Mankind, mm. for example. But these were again and again, uh, by the UN especially, they were not adopted. And I understood that they said to you that that was because of a lack of political will. Mm -hmm. So sure. what is political will actually? Political will is the mentality that this is us and that's them. And, and that's very separate. And I have, to com I have to represent my own interests in a situation where it's me and where there are others. And the others are either friends or enemies 
our partners are indifferent, but it's not me and it's not us. And therefore the political will is to represent our interest, my interest, our immediate interest. So very clearly I worked for the UN, for example, for seven years. I was doing it as a director of research and we created projects you know, like for cooperation. And uh, people individually says, yes, wonderful, this is the way we should be going. But when it comes to actually acting on it, then the nas so-called national interest or local interest uh, prevail. Yeah. So was this the moment that you, you realized that it's consciousness that should be changed first? There is no other help. You know, we used to have these sessions uh, among friends. We used to have these discussions where we talk about what needs to be done. We have these plans and projects and we're circulating it. And then we come back in the evening and disappointed and say, look, they haven't acted on it again, you know? Yeah. And then we talked and by midnight, you come to the uh, conscious, come to the conclusion, yes, they still don't have the, the political will. And then you talk about for some more, by 2 a.m. we come to the conclusion, it's because they don't have the consciousness. So I said, why not start with the consciousness? Don't wait all that time. You know? It's just attack the issue, the key issue right on the head. You know? yeah. Consciousness for me is your vision of yourself and the world. And it tells you how to act. But basically, a con consciousness is a mentality. It's, it's based on a worldview. And it, it tells you the values, and the values tells you how to act. Sometimes you are not conscious of those values, but uh, consciousness is, well, to be conscious precisely, is to recognize what your values are and act accordingly. And therefore, it's, uh, if it determines how you act, then consciousness is the key to to how the world is running, because it's, the world runs on the interaction of all the people. The interaction of everybody creates the world. Yeah. So what's the most important and impactful thing that we can do? It's somewhat of a cliché, but it's a good cliché. It's what Gandhi said, change yourself. Okay. In this case, change your mentality. This world is a very, very delicately balanced world, which is on the brink of a series of bifurcations. So uh, we have to, uh, we can act as a butterfly. This world is not predictable, but influenceable. Now, a small little fluctuation at a critical point can influence the outcome. And that's the idea of a butterfly effect. A butterfly effect means that a tiny little fluctuation of the air, even light created by the wings of a butterfly, can create an air stream, a, a, a vortex in the air, you know, which can blow up and change the climate. Does that also mean that we have the power to change the system? Yes, we do. Not always. The system has to be in a very uh, critical phase to be, to be, to be changeable. Otherwise, it defends the status quo. Now, this we know as, as a state is the state of crisis. We call it a crisis. But as we know, as the Chinese know very well, uh, a crisis is both danger and opportunity. A crisis is the point of transformation. Yeah. At that point, yes, a butterfly can change the system. System theory tells you this. Every time you have a systemic change, the change comes from the periphery. I mean, we know that in biology, for example, when there is a whole ecosystem which is no longer, cannot maintain itself anymore, then the mutations do not occur in the center, and they are not evident in the system itself. The mutations occur in the species that are in the periphery. They constantly produce mutations. And these mutations, before they become, I mean, there are the species, before they move to the center, from the viewpoint of the center, they are called hopeful monsters. Because for the current system, they're monsters. It's not normal. 
but they're hopeful because it could be that when the system changes, they'll take over. So is it true that we have become more powerful than ever in our history? We have a chance to be powerful because we now have a chance to be consciously become the, that's a bad word to say, the masters of our destiny, I don't mean in hierarchical sense. We can really direct or guide the destiny of this entire species. Yeah. Okay. And we have this opportunity, we have the chance to exercise a conscious influence, a critical, crucial influence, because the time of transformation is coming. But why then do we often still feel so powerless and frustrated? Because the world is still seems to be running like a giant system running into its own demise, running its, its own end, to its own crisis point. It does seem like that. At the same time, look at the mentalities, look at the, at the new pop culture in very many ways, which is much more based on, on connection, on getting on the same wavelengths, there is something that people are responding to. If you compare this emerging culture with the culture that was emerging 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you see the tremendous difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be the periphery, be the cultural edge, be the emergent butterfly. Yeah. You know. Believe me, if you can bring together the culture that is emerging to make it more powerful, that will change the world. But more and more people start living alternatively. Their example will spread. They provide an alternative. Create the alternative. So just live in the, in the new world already. Be the new world. Be the change. You know, see. Yes. Bring people together to see that it's meaningful. It, it's fulfilling. Yeah. And it's a historic task. It's a challenge that you're here to respond to.